Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and this week's plan of the week is Pilea peperomioides, commonly referred to as the pancake plant, the UFO plant, the Chinese money plant, the friendship plant, the list goes on and on. There are countless names for this houseplant. However, I really appreciate the scientific name of this houseplant, Pilea peperomioides, because when translated to English, it really tells you everything you have to know about this houseplant. So the suffix oides in the species peperomioides translates to English from Latin uh, as looks like. So if you translate the whole plant name from Latin to English, it's basically saying Pilea that looks like a peperomia. So it's very straightforward. You can see it really does have a striking resemblance to a couple of peperomias that come to mind, like peperomia uh, polybotria, the teardrop peperomia, or peperomia campylotropa, peperomia caparata, and all those different kinds of more common peperomias. So you can definitely see the resemblance there, and I can imagine that many people uh, would mistake this as a peperomia if they uh, were just seeing it for the first time. However, this is a rather popular houseplant. This is the it's plant of yesteryear, as I like to call it. This was like a total hot commodity in like 2000, maybe 16, 2017-ish, uh, right when houseplants were starting to gain some popularity. I feel like this houseplant and the fiddle leaf fig were just like all the rage. A plant this size of a Pilea peperomioides back then would not only be very hard to get your hands on, surprisingly, for how readily available they are in today's climate, uh, but it probably would cost you this size plant, at least $50, probably pushing like $75. The price was astronomical in comparison to any other of the house plants on the market at the time. But I like to say that this is an excellent house plant to kind of just take note of as how the house plant market works because one day something might cost an astronomical price tag, but the next year it might be just like every other house plant, like a pothos and the snake plant and just everywhere. So supply and demand works in magical ways, you might say. Anyway, so the care for this houseplant is very, very straightforward, I would say. I did a video a long time ago, like it's, it's very old and embarrassing for me about the care for this houseplant. So I really did want to take a little dive back into this and share after some more experience with this houseplant what I would consider the care to be. So this uh, as far as any Pilea that I've grown in my home, uh, it requires the most sunlight out of any of them. But at the same time, this is kind of an outlier in comparison to any of the other Pileas that I've ever grown or seen for that matter. As Pileas, if you're familiar with like the aluminum plant or other plants that are called friendship plants, because I would say practically every Pilea is classified commonly as a friendship plant, um, they are mostly more foliage leafy varieties that are much more suitable for like a terrarium environment. They're often plants that I would say thrive in loamier soils and like more humid environments and medium to lower light areas of the home. The Pilea peperomioides, as I said, is definitely an outlier to all of those. I do find that this plant would appreciate more sunlight than not. Does it need to be inside a window? Absolutely not. I'm growing this one right here probably about six feet away from my east facing window. I grow it on my TV stand, although I move it off all the time because it gets in the way sometimes. As this plant is getting a little bit bigger, it might need to find a new spot in my home. But uh, it's very reliable in the sense that you can just put it anywhere within, I'd say like eight feet of a medium, brightly indirect lit window, uh, and it will thrive. I think it will thrive even inside the window if you give it a little too much sunlight. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the leaves become a little bit more chlorotic. However, I've had in the past, like when I filmed my last Pilea peperomioides video a couple years ago, I remember I was living on like the second floor in Center City and um, there was not a lot of sunlight in my apartment and this houseplant wouldn't do a single thing for me unless I had it directly in the window. So obviously that was a much different lighting situation. Even though it was the west window in comparison to my east facing windows, it just it's all subjective, let's say. So uh, you do want to make sure that you are giving these a, an applicable amount of light, let's say, uh, but that's all going to depend on what kind of situation you have. The point I'm trying to drive home here is that this Pilea, in comparison to any other Pilea that I'm aware of, definitely requires much more sunlight, whether it be a window or a grow light. Make sure you have this in the general vicinity of an area that's definitely receiving adequate sunlight. If not, you're going to find that these lower leaves on the houseplant will start to fall off at an alarming rate, and then your houseplant might just have like two or three sad little leaves up top and just not have the full effect that your house plant would normally be giving you. Speaking of leaves falling off though, that's something you might also come across if you are not watering this house plant correctly. So uh, this is a plant that you can be rather lackadaisical with. Um, in comparison to other pilea, like I was mentioning with the sunlight, uh, this 
likes to stay on the dry side where other pilea need to stay on the moist side or else they're going to wilt very quickly. Uh, this one is a little bit more uh, drought tolerant, definitely a little bit more hardy, I would say. Um, you can probably water your pileas roughly, if I had to give you a ballpark, like six to 10 days if you're going on a kind of routine there. Of course, you do wanna use your best judgment you don't want to overwater your houseplants, and if you do overwater your pilea, that's going to uh, be in the same situation where if you're not giving the houseplant enough light, as these lower leaves will turn yellow and fall off, and those go hand in hand. Not giving your houseplants enough light and giving your houseplants too much water or too often uh, are basically the same issue, so just something to be aware of there for certain. You can also use my taco test that I came up with a while back uh, to find out when it's time to water your pilea peperomioides, as these leaves are very succulent. If I'm giving them a little squeeze, as if I'm trying to fold up the leaves that are normally flat up like a hard taco shell, I am feeling some real resistance with this plant as it's well watered, it doesn't require a watering. And if I were to squeeze it up like a taco shell, this leaf would snap and break immediately. So of course, as always, use the taco test with caution. <laughs> but if this plant was in need of water or if the soil was very dry, uh, these leaves would be very malleable. They would bend every which way up like a taco shell without breaking. So it's just a surefire way for me to know without having to stick my finger in the soil or get out my moisture meter, I can just give the leaves a little feel and I can know whether it's time to water my peperomia or not. However, if it were time to water this house plant, hello muffin, we have a visitor, uh, these leaves would become very malleable and they would bend any which way up like a taco shell without snapping and breaking. So it's just a surefire way for me to know when it's time to water my Pilea peperomioides uh, without overwatering it, as overwatering is the number one way to kill your house plants in my experience, especially ones that are a little bit more succulent like this Pilea peperomioides. Hello, sweet pea. <laughs> I think she wants some attention. I was away the past two days, so she's definitely wanting me to pay some mind to her, so best get on with the video. Um, as far as fertilizing my Pilea peperomioides, I just follow my typical uh, steps for fertilizing that I do where I just use typically an inorganic fertilizer as organic fertilizer smells bad and I'm not eating my house plants so I think there's no harm done there in using an inorganic fertilizer and I will use half of the recommended amount for um, the spring and summer months so let's say like March maybe April I'll give them the first fertilization and then I will cease fertilizing probably around November or October when the days are starting to get a little too short as far as pests goes, um, these have been decently pest free. I feel like the only issue I've ever had with these is maybe like some mealy bug along the trunk that this forms. So this plant will continuously put off leaves and as I was saying over time, some of the lower ones might turn yellow and fall off. And oh my goodness, sweet pea, you are really trying to get in here today. Um, the lower leaves are gonna fall off. And as it grows upright, like many other house plants that we grow in our home, it's going to form a trunk and it'll kind of be this funky little tree. But also, as this plant grows on over time, it's going to start to form babies. That's why this plant is like so popular back in the day, I feel like, or maybe it's because it looks so fun and peculiar, I guess. I don't know, there's probably a bunch of reasons why this plant was so popular. But one of the main gimmicks with this house plant, let's say, is that it's just very fertile. Uh, it's constantly putting off these baby offset plants from the perimeter of the planter that are just kind of like working their way down to the base and then back up and then they become these baby pilea plants. So that's why they called it the friendship plant because it was a house plant that you could give to anybody and make friends with. I don't know what the whole thing is. Obviously these names go way back, but it's super easy to propagate those little babies. You wanna wait till they're big enough uh, to sustain themselves, of course, if they're super young and the uh, leaves aren't any bigger than one of my fingernails, they're not gonna survive. But once the leaves start to get to this more mature size, as you can see, on my plant here, which, you know, the leaves can get much bigger than this in prime situations, but this is typically the size of leaf that you're going to see uh, when you're growing them in the home. Um, at that point, they're definitely ready to sustain themselves, and you can go ahead and cut them with a sharp uh, knife or shears or scalpel or whatever you have, and you can put it inside some water or any kind of potting media that you're going to use to propagate this, and it will become a new plant, and you can go ahead and give it to one of your friends, or you can just have another plant for yourself, which is always uh, nice as well. Muffin clearly wants a lot of attention right now, so I'm going to wrap up filming this video. Uh, but the Pilea peperomioides is such a great house plant, but like I said, it really is just a prime example of all these house plants that are getting kind of blown out of proportion in today's climate with the house plants, and uh, their prices are going up astronomically, 
And I just wouldn't be surprised if a couple years they turn out just like the Pilea peperomioides. I think it's really hard to believe at this point, if you're rather new to gardening, that a houseplant like this that's so common every time you walk into one of your local houseplant stores or even your big box stores nowadays that's readily available at such low prices could have been such a high price. Like this literally, I remember seeing these on like logies.com, for example, in two inch pots for $49.99 in like 2016, 2017. And that was a good deal back then. Like that doesn't feel right saying, but it was a good deal back then. So it's come a long way. Uh, definitely take heed from this. I think it's a great example, but I think this is an excellent plant to learn a lot about houseplants with, not only just how the market works, but the Latin. I think the name is an excellent example to start learning about the Latin. And also just the care for this houseplant really gets you to know um, how important it is to not overwater your houseplants. I think that is the number one mistake people are going to make with this houseplant, especially if they're getting used to growing like pothos and things like that in their home philodendrons. And then they get this more succulent houseplant that requires a little bit more sunlight and a little less uh, water. So just some things to keep in mind there, but such an excellent houseplant. I highly recommend it to anybody. And I also think it makes a perfect gift. So thank you guys so much for joining me. If you don't already follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in the next episode of Plan of the Week. Have a great day.